On the one hand, you have the Israelis taking a whack at Iran three separate times in Syria. And now, finally, the Iranians have responded in the aftermath of Donald Trump violating and withdrawing from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the Iran nuclear deal. And, and what really concerns me about all of this is that Iran's acting irresponsibly, Israel's acting irresponsibly, even the United States is acting irresponsibly. So we have a diplomacy deficit in the region right now. We have no communication, and that leads to miscommunication, which in turn facilitates misperception and miscalculation, and that's when really bad things, like a wider regional war, can start to happen. Because where is the exit strategy here? How, how can things be cooled down? That's a great question, and that's what concerns me the most, is right now we're in a situation that's tantamount to driving down a highway, driving down a freeway, and at the end of the freeway is a cliff that falls into an ocean. And as you're driving down this freeway, there's no exits, there's no off-ramps. So if we don't quickly build some off-ramps, if we don't quickly build some ways to de-escalate tensions in the region, we're going to stumble into a war whether we want one or not. When you talk about stumbling into a war, is this perhaps less of a stumble and more of an end game, particularly for some players in the region? Well, I think that the Israelis have been chomping at the bit for quite some time now to take a whack at Iran. And there's certainly, to be fair, hardliners in Iran who want the same thing. But I have a hard time believing that it is in the American national interest, European national interest, or Russia's interest to pursue this pass of military confrontation. So it really is re going to require all outside parties, all international actors, to step in and enforce some kind of restraint, some kind of responsibility on all of the regional actors to make sure that a very bad problem that currently exists doesn't get worse. Benjamin Netanyahu and John Bolton were both in positions of power before the Iraq war. Some analysts have said that this has faint reminiscence of that time. Is there concern that there is a focus on regime change or at least some implosion of the Iranian government here? I think we should be crystal clear that it's not just a concern, that's, that's the policy as it exists today. Um, John Bolton made very clear before he came into the National Security Advisor position on what he thought Donald Trump's Iran policy should be. He actually published a document saying Donald Trump won't meet with me anymore, but here's what I think we should do. And he's following it step by step by step. This is available on the internet. Everybody should go and read it. The plan is absolutely economic strangulation, or at least an attempt to strangle Iran economically and facilitate some kind of regime change, whether it be from the outside or inside. This, of course, is a fool's errand. If it was possible, any of Donald Trump's predecessors would have tried it. So instead, what we need is more responsible actors on the international stage, particularly our European partners, to step up and say enough is enough. We're not going to follow you down this path of folly. You talk about a deficit of, uh, of diplomacy in Iran. Clearly, there are competing domestic interests here. How do you think the Iranian, this Iranian government should react? How much restraint can be shown? It's a great question again. You know, I think up until the point that Donald Trump violated and pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal, the Iranian government did demonstrate restraint. Uh, they were hit three times uh, in Syria before they responded to Israeli attacks. Now we're in a situation where in the aftermath of that American violation and withdraw, withdrawal excuse me, of the JCPOA, Iran is going to respond proportionately. And I'm not an advocate of that. And if I were talking to Iranian officials right now, I would urge restraint, continued restraint. Uh, try to be the bigger party in the region and understand that a military confrontation, being goaded into one, is not in the interest of Iran, it's not in the interest of the region, and it's certainly not in the interest of the international community.